back to video four of the Flow Certified Professional online training. In this video, Introduction Part B, we're going to look at how to step into team flow and how to sustain team flow. So for team flow, how to get into it, we're going to talk a little bit about the power of unity. We're going to talk about creating team spirit and loyalty to each other. I know that can be, a, um, I don't know if it's a controversial topic in today's world, but it seems more and more people are becoming less and less loyal to each other. And we want to help you reverse that trend and help your teams become loyal to each other. And then how to turbocharge your leadership and results. And for me, it doesn't matter if you're doing agile or if you're doing traditional or what, what they call waterfall uh, project management in order to get your product development done. What's important is that you're applying the leadership principles of flow to any of those Flow is basically methodology agnostic. It doesn't matter. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and try to help you and your teams be able to step into and enter into a sustainable state of flow. Just like at the individual level, you want it to be consistent. You want it to be duplicatable. You want it to be sustainable. And here you're pursuing team excellence and transformation. And transformation, again, is more than just the tool set. It's the mindset. And you really need to be understanding that those are two different things. Okay? And both are necessary. And so you want to increase the value of your team's brand inside the organization and to deliver the wow that everybody is expecting. So... The vision, goal, mission for this video is, is that your teams will be able to consistently and repeatedly deliver remarkable results that were derived from unity. Remember the you that we talked about earlier uh, the for the unified vision framework? Okay, it's really important to develop a team unity. And if you can do that, you can enter into a sustainable state of flow by focusing on the most important things like vision, okay, mission, team goals for the next iteration of the incremental product, service, or result that delivers real business value. We're, we're all about delivering real value. If we're not delivering real value, the organization's going to figure that out pretty fast. And so it's really important for everyone to start to shift their mindset a little bit and start going, we must deliver an incredible value to the organization. That's what the pursuit of excellence is all about. Now, using flow and everything that we teach in flow gives you the ability to create an amazing level of team spirit and team member loyalty. I can give you an example. I'm going to stop right here and go off script just a little bit. We had a client and we did a retrospective where we had the head of the division with a couple of his direct reports with the team in the room with that executive. And one of the other team members, uh, as the executive was asking questions, as we were doing the retrospective with the executive, one of the team members just piped up and he said, this team means so much to me. They mean more to me than actually my division or department that I work with. I look forward to being with this team every day. If I'm not able to deliver my uh, post-it notes, the uh, product backlog item that we're trying to deliver, I feel like I've totally let my team down. 
And when I meet these, my team members in the hall, we actually stop, we talk to each other. We're actually finding out about each other's lives. And this is the highlight of my day and week is working with this team. That's what every executive wants. And the executive got so excited. He sent two of his uh, people in to ask us, what did you do? How did you do that? And we reminded them that, well, you've got Nehemiah effect, you've got flow. We teach all the principles of how you create that team unity where the team members are literally willing to throw themselves under a bus for each other. That's amazing. And when executives hear that, they go, that's exactly what I need. Uh, how do I do that with my other teams? How do I duplicate that? And so when the executives start to understand the impact of it's, it's not enough to just have agile or project management or whatever you're doing or all these really great processes in place. That's not enough. You need what we're doing with flow and all of the, uh, not just the tools and frameworks and models, but you need the mindset. And the mindset is built over time. None of this is a quick or easy fix. It takes time, but Success breeds success, and you're able to take with each team that you're bringing up the flow curve, that success breeds more success. It also energizes and breathes life into the team. It is just incredibly important, the words that we use. Our words have creative force. When we talk about our teams, we need to talk about them in a way that energizes each of the team members. It breathes life into the team. The team I'm talking about in this example that I just gave, not a single executive up that food chain had any confidence whatsoever that this team could deliver anything. Nothing at all. And so I realized, and, and I had people coming to me telling me, oh, yeah, this is never going to work. It's going to be <laughs> a train wreck in slow motion. And instead, this team delivered in their rollout uh, six products into this uh, tool that they were implementing for the division. The other division took three years to deliver two products in, in about a year this team delivered six. So uh, that, that was a multiple, multiple times. It was three times. That was a 300% increase over the other division. And it was a tool that the organization needed in order to give higher quality service and care to their customers. So this is just team flow can make or break an organization and team flow is built on individual flow. A little tip, like in basketball, all of my brothers and I, we, we played basketball and we all understood it wasn't enough for one of us to go into flow. We needed at least two team members to catch on fire, step into flow in order for the team to be successful. If, if you only had one team member stepping into flow and the other four on the basketball team weren't stepping into flow, you're going to get slaughtered. That happened to Chicago Bulls as they were coming to the end of their dynasty. Uh, Scottie Pippen was hurt. He was out and uh, refused to come back. He had some surgery rescheduled or delayed so that it knocked him out for the, that last season there. And what was interesting is, is nobody could step up and fill Scotty's spot in stepping into and entering into flow. Michael could enter into flow and score 40, 50 points in a game, but that wasn't enough for the Bulls to win. Even the worst teams in the NBA were beating the Bulls at that point in time. Well, that's because 
you didn't have enough people stepping into flow in order to create something that was uh, sustainable. And so without that, you're, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. And so this team part is vitally important to what we're trying to do with flow. Over time, we've been doing this for 25 years. And if you look at the traditional methods without flow, you get 14, 16% success rate. And if you look at agile without flow, you get about 42% success rate. So neither of them even come close to being successful half the time. And so we've noticed that uh, with flow, we can take traditional and get Agile-like results, and we've been doing that for 25 years. And this is achieved over time via training, coaching, and mentoring. And by the way, thanks to Bob Geist, a Flow Certified Coach, working his way up to becoming a Flow Certified Trainer, uh, for the prototype for this illustration. Absolutely, we've got a lot of great people who have contributed to Flow as we're moving forward. And so applying flow to traditional, been doing that for 25 years, and we got near or even better than agile results using flow with traditional. But remember, flow is an umbrella. It's the leadership framework that sits over the top of... <coughs> it, that's not a COVID cough. <clears throat> It sits over the top of what, whatever you're doing <clears throat> at the team level. So, without flow, <coughs> you're doing about <clears throat> three times better with Agile than traditional, if you're doing Agile correctly. Now, just like the example that I gave earlier, <clears throat> we had a team that was doing Agile. They got a 300% increase over what they had been doing previously using Flow. <clears throat> that doesn't mean that they succeeded with every project, but their productivity went right through the uh, ceiling. <laughs> using Flow with Agile is like putting Agile on steroids. I know that's probably not a good way to say that. But <clears throat> your success rates will go up dramatically. We've done this over and over and over again. And not just what Ted and I had done here in the last 25 years with Flow. We've had hundreds of people take Flow into their organizations and achieve similar or even better results than we did. This quote on Flow for Teams by Craig Lambert. I, I, I just love this one because it's so spot on. <clears throat> Rowers have a word for this, frictionless state. They call it swing. Trying too hard sabotages, sabotages boat speed. Trying becomes striving and striving undoes itself. Social climbers strive to be aristocrats but their efforts prove them no such thing. Aristocrats don't strive. They've already arrived. Swing is the state of arrival. I just love that. It's like you can just feel the boat flowing through the water as the team in unison effortlessly are propelling that boat through the water. You can just feel it as it glides forward. And so... <clears throat> That's the team unity. That's the individual flow that you have to combine as a team to get into that effortless, frictionless state of swing, what we call flow. So we've been talking a little bit about how to enter and sustain a state of team flow. We've talked about how critical it is to have unity and how to create that team spirit and loyalty where they're willing to throw each under the bus, or not throw each, under, each other under the bus, but they're willing to throw themselves under the bus for their team members. 
uh, we're looking at turbocharging char- your leadership and results, and we showed you what we've done in the past and how we're able to do that. So the application of this, taking it out of the book, taking it out of the video here, decide how you're going to support your teams. This is servant leadership, people. S- decide how you're going to support your teams as they enter into a state of flow, of team flow. Take some time to pause right now and reflect on the four whys. And again, we're now applying the four whys to the team level, okay? So write down which ones your project delivers. Is your product slash product gonna deliver more revenue? Is it gonna deliver cost savings? Or is it gonna get rid of or mitigate risk? Or are you just doing the right thing and that's the result that you're creating? 